Generative Fill can do a lot more than just alter and expand photos. It can convert images into 360 degree photos, turn anything into a seamless pattern, convert photos into different mediums, all sorts of incredible stuff that's pretty easy. It also has applications in video where I've been trying to push the limits and see what's possible. I want this to be an all-encompassing video, so we'll start with some common use cases to cover the basics before we jump into the more out-of-the-box stuff. First, a simple but fun one. These expanding album covers went viral on Twitter, and it's really simple. Just open up the photo, click C to switch to the Crop tool, hold Option, and expand it. Then with the Rectangular Marquee tool, Command A to select all, then hold the Option key and subtract. We'll just subtract this area, leaving a little bit of room on the sides. And boom, we have three options to choose from. If you don't see one you like, click Generate again and you'll get three more. A more practical example would be to change the aspect ratio of a photo by adding instead of subtracting. Like to turn a photo into a square, instead of cropping it down and losing some information, you can add to it. You could also turn a photo into a panorama or just keep expanding for an infinite zoom. Careful with your file size on that. So this is already really useful, but it can get much more specific. So let's try this one out. Make a selection with the lasso tool, and this time we'll add a prompt. For this, it'll be nose. Nice. And a quick note is the contextual taskbar moves wherever you're working. I don't like that. So you can grab right here and drag it anywhere you want and then click the three dots and select pin bar position. I like to keep this at the bottom. If you don't like any of the three options, you can always click generate again right here. Um, tough choice, but this one looks good and we need some hair too. And you can just hit enter to submit instead of clicking generate. And I like this one. Now he needs some eyebrows and just hold shift to add to your selection. And then of course a beard and easy as that but these clothes don't fit anymore so let's give him a suit something that's really nice about this is you don't have to be that precise with your selections and beautiful and if you haven't noticed yet this generates a new layer with a layer mask so this is all non-destructive but it does replace 100 percent of the pixels in your selection so there's no transparency a good demonstration is with glasses you can tell these aren't the same eyes you could switch this to sunglasses which is Another good note, you can use multiple prompts with the same selection and they'll show up here under this one layer. But I want standard glasses, so I'll click on the mask. There's some new options on the contextual taskbar for subtract from mask and add to mask. Then you just paint over the mask where you need or all the traditional methods still apply. You could click the brush tool, adjust the hardness and opacity as needed and subtract from the mask where the eyes are. And this is using the content within your image to generate. So you don't need style prompts like photorealistic or HD things that you might use in mid journey. It's best to keep your prompts as simple as possible. It matches the lighting, colors, perspective, shadows and reflections all on its own. To demonstrate how powerful this is, it looks like a hot day here. So let's add some water. And that reflection is absolutely incredible. I generated quite a few so you can see how good these are. If you've ever tried to add a reflection in Photoshop before, you know how much of a game changer this is. Another cool thing is there's a select sky button now so you can easily replace a sky. And I was doing another example, adding puddles to the Abbey Road cover. And I discovered that Paul McCartney is barefoot. Is that news to anyone else? I've probably seen this photo a thousand times and never noticed that. But anyways, it ended up looking pretty cool. And using just these techniques, we can apply this to video. This only works with still shots, easily at least. But say we need to extend a horizontal shot into vertical for a short. Just grab a still shot from the video, then bring it into Photoshop and extend it. Then you would just lay that underneath in whatever video editor you're using. It works the same way for vertical to horizontal. That's a practical way to use it, but I have been experimenting. But it is more steps, so I'll save that until the end. I also used it to splice in random objects on the shelves behind me throughout this video. I might start doing that in all my videos randomly just to see if anyone notices. I'm sure you can gather from all this that it's really easy to remove or replace anything in a picture, whether that's unwanted objects or lens flares or tourists from a photo. You can also change an entire background. So here's a super fancy shot I had taken in my beautiful studio, but I'm trying to impress everyone on Instagram. Then down here on the contextual taskbar, click select subject to select the person and then copy that to a new layer. That'll move back to the lower layer and replace the whole thing. Need to blend myself in a little bit. That's better. Then I'm in a hot tub, so I need to make it more realistic and crazy. It's like they trained it specifically on my body and then can't forget the cigar. And there's one more thing to top it all off. 
So the point of this was to show what generative fill is not good at. But most things involving people, especially faces and hands, are pretty bad. And with animals, it's hit or miss. But it's still in beta. It took a long time for Midjourney to figure this out. So instead, you could find images online or generate them in Midjourney, then composite them in here and blend it with generative fill. And this was essentially generating from a blank canvas. And overall, Midjourney is still significantly better at that. But Photoshop gives you the option of building your shot with everything exactly where you want it. And it is great at things like nature. So overall, the combination of Photoshop and Midjourney really complement each other's weaknesses when used in tandem. You can also use this to create seamless patterns or 360 degree images. So I'll start with the 360 degree environment since it's actually less steps. So you use the outcrop feature to turn it into a panorama. Then once you have it wide enough, this next step is easier if you have an even number of pixels. So under image, then image size, I'll switch to pixels. I'll actually make it a bit smaller for this and use an easy number. All right, you can tell that this wouldn't work for a 3D environment because of the edges. So to fix that, I'll merge these onto a new layer, then go to filter, other, then offset. Then choose half the number of pixels as your document is wide. So for mine, that's 10,000. And that puts the seam right in the middle. Then just make a selection where the seam is and use generative fill. Then I'll merge these layers, command option shift E. And when I go back to offset, you can see that no matter how I move this, it's completely seamless. And now you can use that as a 360 degree photo. Then to make a seamless pattern, you can probably guess how this works now. So I'll go through it quick. Use the same steps to offset it horizontally then use generative fill to hide the seam, then merge the layers, then back to offset and switch horizontal to zero, then change the vertical, then use generative fill for that. Then merge and go back to offset to make sure nothing affected the previous area. And this looks good. Now this will match up perfectly. So if we go to edit and define pattern and name it, Right, then we go to pattern and select it. Then as I adjust the scale, you can see it's perfectly seamless. So this works for all sorts of applications, whether it's for print products or 3D textures. It's a really easy trick that was pretty difficult before generative fill. This next one is sort of a pro tip that applies in certain circumstances. You can adjust the intensity that generative fill is executed with. It's easiest to just explain this with an example. So first we'll use a new way to make selections with quick mask. Enter quick mask mode by either clicking here or with Q on the keyboard. And this lets you paint your selections. So I'll fill with black, which is my background color. So I'll hit command backspace. And this red overlay means that nothing is selected. Then I'll click my foreground color picker and select white with a brightness of 100%. And this brightness will choose at what intensity your pixels will generate at. So in this case, 100%. Then I'll paint where I want the mask to be, then hit Q to exit quick mask. And you'll see my selection with the marching ants. Then I'll type what I want in generative fill and that generates like normal, but this looks strange because it should be underwater. So we need to generate these pixels with less intensity. So I'll hide this layer and then start over and go back into quick mask mode. But this time we'll change the brightness to 40%, then select the same area. Then when we exit quick mask, it pops up with a warning that no pixels are more than 50% selected and the selection edges will not be visible. So hit okay. And we don't see our selection because our pixels were selected at 40%, but our selection is still there. And we'll use the same prompt for generative fill and we get a shark that looks like it's underwater this time. An important note is this is different from opacity. So the pixels are still at 100% opacity. There's no transparency, but the image was generated at 40% intensity, which gives it the look of blending with the content below. And you can mask with different brightnesses. So your generation will be with varying intensities all at the same time. Although there's not that many times where that would be necessary. Now onto something that's really cool. You can turn any photo into a watercolor painting or oil painting. This works much better than trying to do this in mid journey, which doesn't stay as close to your original image. I'll turn this shot from Mesa Arch into watercolor. This is one of those Instagram versus reality places. Here's what it looked like while I was taking this photo. This doesn't work if you just select the image and type watercolor painting. This will be similar to how we adjusted the intensity. Go to quick mask then go to edit, then fill, shift backspace gets you here too, then select color in the drop down box, then type in that brightness box again. This will vary how strong the watercolor effect is and how close it looks to the original image. I like it around 10 to 20%. So hit okay and then exit quick mask. Now we still have our selection even though it doesn't show it. Now type watercolor painting into the generative fill box, but this looks great. To make this look even better, we can add a filter. To do that, first merge this all onto a new layer with Command Option Shift E, then go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Click Sketch, then choose Water Paper. Then adjust these sliders. I like the fiber length low. Um, it gets blurry if you raise it. Then I move the contrast high and the brightness fairly high. But play around with these for yourself. And this adds the texture as if the water is absorbing into the paper. For oil painting, I'll use a shot from Thor's Well in Oregon. 
I wish I had a behind the scenes for this one because this was not an easy shot to get. And oil painting is a little more complex to add the texture, but the first steps are the same. So quick mask, shift backspace, brightness the same, exit, then oil painting. But this one looks awesome. Next, to add some texture, we'll make a composite snapshot, command option shift E. I started experimenting with this from a video by Blue Lightning TV, by the way. So a lot of this process is based off of that. But on this new layer, we'll remove all saturation with command shift U, then image, adjustments and shadows highlights and pull up the shadows a little and darken the highlights some then open the channels panel and command click the rgb panel to select all the tones then back to the layers panel and invert the selection with command shift i then press delete then deselect with command d then reduce the fill to zero which makes it so we can't see this layer but we can see all the effects we apply to it then double click the layer to open the layer style window select bevel and emboss then you can pause and copy these settings. That adds some really great texture. And then there's one more thing we can do. First, take another composite snapshot, Command Option Shift E, then Filter, Filter Gallery again, but this time open Texture. And you can leave the scaling at 100%, then set the relief around two and the lighting from the top left. And then if I zoom in, you can see it adds that canvas texture to it. And this looks awesome. And you can try experimenting with different styles besides watercolor or oil painting. Just get creative and see what works for you. And I've been experimenting with more creative ways I can use generative fill for video. One way is outcropping into different scenes. Maybe even add a character. There's tons of possibilities for fun ways to break up a shot or creative transitions, or to make it seem like I'm not filming this from just a desk crammed into a corner, but on Mars instead. You can do this all in generative fill, but the way that I've found that works better for these more out there scenes is to use mid journey and then combine it. And that character was animated with Heijin. I'm not going to cover that part in this video, but it's great and really easy to use and you can do a lot for free. There'll be a link down in the description if you wanna try it out. So I take a still shot into mid journey and use it as a reference image with a simple prompt and the image weight at two. Then take that image and use their brand new zoom out feature with whatever prompt you want. Then take that into Photoshop, lay the original over it, and use generative fill to blend the area where the two images meet. The editing part will vary based on your software. In Premiere, I add the image, lay the video on top, and line them up, then nest it. From there, it's just zooming out on each of the generations from Midjourney. I know that was pretty fast. I've just started experimenting with the best ways to do this. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on that, let me know. I might make a whole video just on the possibilities with that because it's been a lot of fun. So that was in-depth on all the capabilities of generative fill. There's of course endless more use cases and situations it could be applied in, but that should give you the skills for anything that could arise and hopefully inspired some creative ideas.